Some people are telling us that something very strange happened in State House Mombasa on the eve of Mashuja Day. This is what we are told happened. His Excellency Raila Odinga, Ali Hassan Joho, the governor of Mombasa, and Amazon Kingi, his Khalifi counterpart, walked into State House, yeah, or attempted to walk into State House, on the eve of Mashuja Day. But they were politely denied access, yeah, because the president was meeting with military commanders, whatever that means. And they were asked, yeah, to come back the next morning for breakfast, because that would be the only time the president would be available to see them. Quite a story, this one, yeah, with plenty of loopholes, yeah, which I'll come to in a minute. Anyway, the next morning at 7.20 a.m., His Excellency Ray Lodinga, Ali Hassan Jo, and Amazon Kingi were back, and they were ushered into the VAP guest room. Now, just a minute, I can't resist commenting about this one. <laughs> now, VIP guest room is very important person guest room. Does that mean that uh, state house is a common place where there's a VIP place? Because you only have a VIP place in a common place. You cannot have a VIP lounge in Buckingham Palace. Or can you? Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, let's continue. When they were at this VIP place within State House Mombasa, <laughs> uh, Raila insisted that they wait for the president so that they could have breakfast together. And they waited and waited. By 9.30, the president had not turned up for breakfast with them. And then this story gets sweeter. Yeah, it is said that later, Raila and company discovered that Deputy President William Samoy Ruto had flown into Mombasa on a Kenya Air Force aircraft. And when he landed, he went straight into a private meeting with the president. And after that, the Deputy President headed for the Mashuja Day function and he was quickly followed by the president. And then there's more. During the speeches, Raila Odinga was not included in the list of persons to speak. But his buddy, so the story goes, Ali Hassan Joho, broke protocol. Yeah, and after he had finished speaking, he invited Raila to speak. And then to add kachumbari to this story, yeah, to add a bit of spice <laughs> to make the story sweeter, Raila, Joho and Kingi skipped the luncheon after the Mashuja Day celebrations and instead went to sulk somewhere <laughs> and re strategize. Yeah. The whole point of this story, yeah, whoever brought it out, whoever penned it, whoever promoted online, the whole purpose of this story objective is very clear. And let me put it in a Kenyan way. Yeah, the objective of the story was Raila Odinga 0, DP Ruto 10. Yani, Ruto Ameshinda 10 nil. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, there are very many reasons why this story doesn't fly. I'll mention just two. Number one, His Excellency Raila Odinga didn't start playing politics yesterday. No. This man went into politics when most subscribers on this channel, I believe over 70%, were not yet born. And when you're in politics that long, you're very expert at at least one thing, avoiding embarrassment. And therefore, you will not rely on the gatekeepers at State House to be able to see the president. How? Even a rookie, yeah, who has got a bit of brains, would never, ever try to do that. Number two, I would like to believe that Raila Odinga has the president's number on speed dial. I also believe he has the number of a very close aide to the president on speed dial. And so, he would not need to come back the next morning and wait and wait and wait for the president to turn up for breakfast, only for the president never to turn up for that breakfast. That one, I don't believe. 
And so my verdict on this story, very nice, juicy, mshene. Period. Not factual. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it is impossible for the very close relationship between His Excellency Raila Odinga, the President, to go sour. No, I'm not saying that. I mean, that can happen at any time. The two could fall out. This is politics. It's normal for people to fall out. It happens all the time. However, what I'm saying is that this story, which has been spread all over social media, is not true, according to me. And there's something else I'd like to add. Whoever was behind this story is a very smart person. Yeah, because they know very clearly that the public loves yeah, a story of Mshene from the corridors of power. Gossip from the corridors of power will get the attention of Kenyans immediately. And they will always drink in, yeah, like a very thirsty person, <laughs> any stories from the corridors of power, claiming that it's from an inside source, right there inside State House Mombasa. And so they knew, right from the onset, that this propaganda was going to be very effective, and I believe it has been. But for this show tonight, I want us to focus on something else that is, of course, very closely related to this very nice castori. And it is this. What would happen if the handshake and the BBI deal ended today? Yeah, if the two principles fell out. Now, I would like us to analyze this without any emotion yeah, and without supporting any side. Let's just do it very coldly. Yeah, using our brains and leaving our hearts yeah, and our favorite candidate and our favorite person out of it. Now, it is very true, yeah, let us start by admitting, that things are not the same today as they were yeah, when this historic handshake took place on the stairs of Arambe House, where the president's office is. For starters, at that time, most of the country was firmly behind His Excellency Ray Lodinga. Yeah, and waiting for instructions from him. At that point in time, he was truly the people's president. However, today, that is not the case. There are many people right across the country who are firm supporters of Raila Odinga at that time who no longer support the man. There are very many Kenyans who feel betrayed by the handshake. That, I admit, is true. However, Raila Odinga still has a lot of clout, political clout, countrywide. Number two, if Raila was dumped today from the handshake, it would attract a lot of sympathy, support, yeah, meaning that even those who may not support him very firmly now would quickly rally behind him. Fact. And then the most critical and the most important point of all, it would change the arithmetic in Parliament. ODM support would be immediately withdrawn from the government. And in my view, that would be nothing but catastrophic. That would mean that the president's people would be left at the mercy of Team Tanga Tanga, yeah, whom we already know are very vengeful people. Now, let us agree on one thing. D.P. Ruto is not Raila Odinga. Let me tell you one thing for a fact. Yeah, if 10%, not even 100, if 10% of the things that have been done to Raila Odinga were done to D.P. William Ruto, <laughs> he would definitely not be the same person as Raila Odinga is today. No way. Going by the past of the deputy president alone, yeah, there would be dire consequences yeah, for all those people who have made life hard for Team Tanga Tanga. <laughs> to date, they would have to pay. Let me be even blunter. Yeah, there is no politician in Kenya I can think of yeah, who would react the way Raila Odinga has reacted up to this point yeah, to things that have been done to him, events that have unfolded in Kenyan politics, I can't think of any other politician who would have responded the way Raila Odinga has done. Yeah. 
sitting on a negotiating table, yeah, sitting down with somebody and negotiating, yeah, even after what has happened. <laughs> and this is why I've always said on this channel, yeah, that Raila Odinga is very different from his late father, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. They're very, very different in the way they approach politics. Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, in my view, was very similar to D.P. Ruto today. In that there was a lot of emotions in his politics. Yeah. <laughs> Raila Odinga is a very different kettle of fish. And this way a lot of people yeah, have not been able to deal with him politically. Because you can't predict the next move the man is going to make. You can't. You know, even in real life, when somebody is emotional, their reaction is very predictable. But somebody who ignores emotions in their business, <laughs> how can you predict what they're going to do next? How? You tell me. Bottom line, and a lot of people on this channel are not going to like what I'm about to say, but still I'll say it because it's a fact. Bottom line is that President Uru Kenyatta needs Raila Odinga much more yeah, than Raila Odinga needs President Uru Kenyatta. And that is a fact yeah, that historians will bring out very clearly many years to come. Yeah, because you know the thing about history, the emotion is gone. And therefore you can analyze the thing clinically yeah, without any emotion. But when you're in the midst of the emotions, of the politics, <laughs> analyzing something coldly is impossible for a lot of people. So if truth be told, I would be a lot more worried uh, if I had a story that Raila Odinga snapped the president, <laughs> that would worry me a lot more. And to tell you why, I'll illustrate it with one of the favorite sayings of Raila Odinga. Usione simba menyeshewa, udani nipaka. <laughs> Don't see a lion yeah, in the Masai Mara somewhere, yeah, which has been rained on. And by the way, there's a lot of rain right across Kenya right now. Don't see a lion that has been rained on. And then you relax and you say, ah, that thing looks like a cat. It must be a cat. Therefore, I think it's a good idea that I approach it yeah, and pat it on its head. Yeah, the way I pat my domestic cat at home. <laughs> Utajua ujui. You know, I firmly believe in politics. It's good to be realistic. Even if you don't like somebody, yeah, be realistic. Yes, that person is your political enemy, but be realistic. Yeah, because if you're not realistic, <laughs> you will try and pat a lion that has been rained on at the bar. Yeah, and the consequences could be dire. In fact, fatal. And so if you're serious yeah, about winning against uh, this person you hate, be realistic. Yeah, don't approach that uh, lion thinking it's a domestic cat. Yeah, approach it with a fully loaded gun. And keep your distance and be careful. Yeah, then you might defeat it. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.